Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's episode of Fade to Obsidian. A ridiculous episode. <laughs> We've got Barbenheimer. Woo! As always, I am Crescent. Joined by Skipper. Hello. And a returning guest, we've got Jabs back again. Welcome, Jabs. Hey, I'm so excited for this one. I know. This one has been in the works since January 5th is when we in the den started discussing this premise of... So, for those listening, I'm going to say right now... Spoiler alert for all of the Red Rising series, including Lightbringer. I don't know how much detail we'd actually get in, but the characters and maybe their character arcs may be included. Uh, But definite spoilers for Barbie and Oppenheimer if you've somehow gone a full year without them being spoiled. Like, also, if spoilers can technically exist for Oppenheimer. Yeah, I was going to say, are you alive? Like, you know how Oppenheimer went. <laughs> Point taken. Yeah, we we already know what the end of that story is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, everybody, be warned for that. Uh, actually, before we jump in, though, welcome back, Jabs. You joined us for Taylor Swift as well as our live stream. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask you what you're drinking tonight, and when. Did you first see Barbie and or Oppenheimer? What is your Barbenheimer story? Oh, that's a great one. I am drinking once. I got the same one, coincidentally, as the Taylor Swift episode. It's this Ariel, which reminds me of The Little Mermaid. Cute. And it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. So that's what I'm drinking. Um, I, I did do the Barbenheimer opening weekend. That's why um, you're here. I, thought, I was like, who do I know I, that did it? <laughs> yeah, I was really excited about it. So, yeah, um, I saw Oppenheimer on Friday night, the like, night it came out in the theaters. And then my mom and sister wanted me to wait to go with them for Barbie. So I drove out to the suburbs on Sunday to see it with them. And they did not even cry at all through the movie. And I uh, am like still a little bit uh, salty about that because I'm like sitting there just, you know, yeah. falling to pieces and they're just like straight faced. So, uh, yeah, no, I had to go see both of those in the same weekend. Obviously. Obviously. Like, yeah. Nice. Crescent, yeah. what are you drinking? And what's your Barbenheimer story? Uh, I've got Summersby apple cider. Nice. Uh, it's actually apple this time, <laughs> not, not pear. some other weird flavor. <laughs> <laughs> They're rhubarb. I do have a blackberry next to me, though. Oh yeah, the, blackberry. the rhubarb is great. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I saw Oppenheimer in theaters. It was not opening weekend. It was probably within a month. I have mm-hmm. to imagine. Yeah. Um. I didn't see Barbie for the first time until like two months ago okay yeah no i didn't i didn't i didn't watch it for the first time the other (laughs) night um no i i watched it with um with estrella and Mm. our daughter nice did you cry that's a very important i did i did i did not unfortunately well i don't know about unfortunately but I, I obviously, as a man, have not been put under all of the pressures that mm-hmm. every woman ever has. And so it, it didn't quite hit as hard for me. Uh, <laughs> I still I still felt things, but I, but I did not. Right. Yeah. You are enough. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will accept a job of beach. <laughs> Aww. Beach. beach. I love it. Um, Better than I... just cold. I was going to say, like, yeah, your job is air. Um, All right. I have. Now we're we're glitching. I know. I was going to say we missed Jab's last remark there. Oh, you're back. You're doing it. No, you're good now. Um, All right. I have. Okay. This is not what I wanted to drink tonight. But unfortunately, I currently live under prohibition. 
and all of our liquor stores are on strike. <laughs> and what I wanted to drink is a Malibu sunset or sunrise, which is basically a tequila sunrise, but using Malibu because Malibu Barbie. But I don't keep Malibu in my home in case of emergencies of all the liquor stores shutting down. And nobody I know has Malibu because we're not 17. So instead, I just went for the pinkest drink I could, which then I added Sprite, and it's not, but it's just Pink Whitney, which is like a lemonade alcohol. And uh, yeah, I did try and then add some red glitter to make it more pink, and it's not doing its job. So there's that. Uh, And my Barbenheimer story, I don't think I can call it Barbenheimer. I have to just call it Barbie. So I... (laughs) (laughs) I saw Barbie previous, like the before opening day, like the the Thursday, a coworker had special tickets. So we all went immediately saw it, loved it. And because of the call out of the BBC version of Pride and Prejudice, I immediately said, I have to see this with my sisters because my one sister watched BBC's Pride and Prejudice every night for a full year her first year of university it was her way of dealing with not being away from home not like the full six hours every night but like two hours to do like so every three days it was on a loop that's a lot of pride and prejudice it's a lot of pride and prejudice yeah, I'm a I'm a repeat watcher. Like I have I've just had interview with the vampire on a loop for like yeah six weeks or but a whole year of one a show whole is like year. I've never even broken that record. I know. So I, I can't say too much about rewatching. Yeah, you and community over there. My community yeah. rewatching yeah. habits are unhinged. I fall asleep yeah, every best. night to the office. So I guess it's kind of the same, mm. right? Like that like but it's a fall yep. asleep show. I'm not actually watching, it's just noise, you know? Yeah. But I, I mean, I respect it. I respect yeah. it. But it was funny. So then I took my two sisters, fully knowing that at least one of the sisters felt this way. And when that line came up, genuinely, my brother-in-law and then my niece and nephew came with me. And my brother-in-law looked down the aisle and pointed at the three of us during the BBC Pride. And like, <laughs> that's you guys. You guys do that. And I was like, this is, that's this is the exact moment. Yeah. I'm a 2005 Pride and Prejudice mm. girly. I, yeah. I mean, just I like I have some Kira, but yeah. But yeah, it's about, I I watched Barbie this afternoon to prepare for this evening because I haven't seen it since the years. and I laughed so hard when we got to that part. I had completely it's so forgotten. Good. I felt so just called out. Like, so yeah. called out. Got it. They got you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then. <laughs> I have not seen Oppenheimer. The plan was for me to see it last week when the Den did Barbenheimer. And I scheduled the event and realized about two hours later that I was not available that day. (laughs) So Crescent had to run the event that I claimed to be hosting. So I have not seen Oppenheimer. So I'm really going off vibes tonight. I'm going to be, I think, going off the marketing campaign uh both of them really um you guys can do the deep dives of like whether or not characters would enjoy the movies but i feel like i, I will just go off the marketing campaign for it yeah jabs has got full notes over here full i do notes. Yeah. i've just got vibes yeah okay um yeah so it. we will jump in as i said we've been planning this since uh january 5th this was the first ridiculous episode we thought of but then we're like it's the one year anniversary we'll wait we'll wait for that is that yeah, we, why we gotta pad out the rest of the year that's why it's all yeah we're doing it in july for the one yeah. year anniversary Amazing. yeah wait, i plan off my shirt first before we get into mm-hmm. it yes what are you wearing i got it <laughs> you guys have yeah. to think about dying so good <laughs> it works and for it, both movies it does work for both movies <laughs> true for those listening, I am in a very sparkly blue dress that I did wear this to see what? it the first night I saw it. I did not wear it to vote, but I wore it the first night. Good one. Yeah. Crescent's got his Howler Con shirt on. 
because he survived Tyler. Yep, because I do not have Barbie or Oppenheimer merch. If you have what? Oppenheimer merch, and it costs like ninety dollars for an, a Kenoff shirt, oh, I, unhinged. No, I want one. I don't have one, but I want one. Yeah. But what would Oppenheimer merch be? I mean, I I just a fedora. Just a hat. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> suspenders. Mm. Yeah, just a mushroom cloud on a sweatshirt. I love it. <laughs> All right, well, let's a shirt that jump just says, in. I am become death destroyer of worlds. There you go. Yeah, that would be badass, honestly. Yeah, I'd buy that. I'd buy that shirt. Where are you wearing that shirt? That's the question. I don't know, but it should be in Barbie. Wherever the fuck I want. Barbie fun, <laughs> make it the yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. I'm just, that has to exist somewhere. I want to go look for it. Does. Yeah, that has to exist somewhere. I, yeah, don't let it. If it doesn't, somebody, somebody who is someone make it more artistic than I am, please make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it's it. Cost link. Just yeah, do everything. It's our um, default. Yeah. All right, let's jump in. So we're. As with all our ridiculous episodes, we're a little loosey-goosey in which order we go in. Uh, We will be talking about all the main characters, especially the point of views, our favorite characters, as well as the ones we love to hate. But if we at any point want to talk about some ridiculous character that we really think we have an opinion on, throw it out there. I also went back through the den the night we came up with this idea, so way back in January, and pulled out some of the quotes people were throwing into chat. Do I have their permission to use these quotes? No, but I am. So they posted them publicly. Ergo, yes. (laughs) Most of them are honestly Salem. Most of them are Salem. (laughs) So there we go. Okay. All right, let's, I think we kick it off. Let's do, and and part of this, so let me set it up a little bit more. Um, we'll start with Darrow. We can say whether or not he is doing, if he's going to opening weekend, if he's doing the Barbenheimer double, who he's going with, which movie he enjoys more. Just let's free flow. What are, what are our thoughts? But let's kick it off with our main character, Darrow. What are we feeling? All right. I wrote down that he saw both of them later, not opening night. Okay. Um, he came to streaming. He didn't really want to spend his money on it. He wasn't like super into yeah. the whole. He was like, at war. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, that's part of what I said. I said he doesn't really get Barbie, but Oppenheimer gives him a PTSD breakdown. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. Yeah, right. Like he's just watching yeah. it, and it's like, yeah. it's the it's docs like, of Ganymede. Oh. Like that's my thought of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I I think he's I think he's going home and uh calling his therapist. Mm-hmm. But there's no therapy in space, is there? So he's, yeah, he's I don't calling know. a telemanus. He's calling someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I I pretty much agree with that. Um yeah, yeah he like he secretly enjoyed Barbie mm-hmm. just because he could kind of shut his brain off oh. um and just vibe. But yeah, he he was he he probably found Oppenheimer very interesting, um, but did not enjoy it at all. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Straight up I, yeah, not having a good time. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, like I agree that like he would understand the nuances of Barbie and like especially with like knowing oppression and all of that but getting that it's not mm. for him like he he would be that supportive guy that like is like okay he, he could be like my nephew who apologized to me after the movie he's 17 and he's like i'm so sorry for what you're going through <laughs> it's like oh like i think he would get it but <laughs> yeah at the end of the day i don't think he likes he's not re-watching either of them Unless like Mustang really wants well, him to rewatch Barbie, he might rewatch Barbie for Mustang. But I don't think he's rewatching Oppenheimer. I think he's he's no. putting that one to rest. But I think it's like stuck in his brain forever now. Like he's mm. forever seeing it when he closes his eyes. He can't forget it. It's part yep. of him. Yeah. Yeah. 
That, yeah. that is now right the Reaper's catchphrase. <laughs> and I become Death Destroyer World. Yeah. Yeah. In Barbie font. <laughs> In Barbie font. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Something below. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what about... he, he, does ha he does have the flow for it. Yes. With the nice blonde, long hair, at least before <laughs> oh, later. Okay. Oh, with the Barbie <laughs> font. Yeah. Okay. I was just really confused what you meant by flow, but okay. I know I was like, what? I got oh, is that a Canadian thing? No, <laughs> or is that just a oh, statue? like hair flow, hair like your flow yeah. of hair? Yeah, I mean, okay, like we have like hair, hair flip. No, uh, I don't know. I I just wouldn't have known that meant no. hair. Like <laughs> that's like it's like a hockey player thing. Yeah, thank you. It's oh, okay. hockey players with long hair. Well, the way they, yeah. they got flow. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. All right. What about Mustang? What are we feeling from All Mustang? Right. I said that she went to see Barbie on opening weekend yep. because she knew Greta Gerwig's work beforehand. Um, and like that's what she was excited for. She was like not into the marketing hype, you know. She's yeah. I think she's over like consumerism generally, but she was like, I think this is gonna be a really be something, you know, yeah. a big deal. It's gonna hit me right here. But I also said, though, she has a healthy respect for Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She'd be yeah. one of the people I can almost see. I feel like her and Victra doing Barbenheimer. I can see the two of them going, you know what? Like, let's let's see Barbie. This is the one where, like, fun girls night will drag Holiday along. But the two of them also can get behind the, like, I mean, Victra's going to have some of the talks of Ganymede guilt as well. But I feel like could would be right into doing the Barbenheimer with Holiday. Oh, absolutely! I think Holiday would be okay. a hilarious third to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they're they're so martial. They've seen so much war. Like yeah. they're absolutely appreciating Oppenheimer for exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. But Oppenheimer was so. It was also just so smart the way the, the storytelling the the visuals how how beautiful it's a truly like beautiful movie mm -hmm. um so i think like she's watching it and she's like oh yeah this is an academy award-winning film yeah. you know like that's what i think she appreciates about it is like the artistry also behind the film not just the fact that it's like you know she's a veteran yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah know, for sure causing nightmares and shit yeah yeah but I have such feelings about Victra and Severo. Okay. What are Victor and Severo? Let us have them. I think they are the quintessential Barbenheimer couple. I think Victor is like, they are both going together opening weekend and they're seeing both together. But Victor is in her, her Oppenheimer cosplay <laughs> and Severo is straight up like Barbie cosplay. Ken shit going on like and they are both so fucking psyched to be there and they're doing it together and like this is a it. couple's treat yeah I'm I'm gonna like stand strong on that I think they are like quintessential Barbenheimer couple I like it I like it I can mm -hmm. that that absolutely seems like something both of them would do yeah yeah how much though also would Severo relate to Ken not just in his relationship with Victor, but also to Darrow. Like, he's such a Ken of just, like, I will follow mm -hmm. you, and I am just, I'm here. Oh, you keep forgetting I'm here. And, like, especially, like, when you get that release at the, oh, see, here you go, Lightbringer spoilers. At, like, when he finally finds himself, it's kind of at the end of Barbie, where she's like, you need to find Ken. It can't just be Barbie and Ken, like, I think Severo hardcore relates to Ken in that like moment. Like I think you're totally right. And that's where, you know, he kind of goes through that arc like later in the series in like the second three books, you know? Yeah. Like especially in the Ringer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so yeah. Funny. I love that. No, nope. yeah, totally correct. That. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. No notes. Yeah. <laughs> uh Salem put so originally the conversation had been that Victor Severo Darrow and Mustang all did Barbenheimer together and did a long debate afterwards and then Salem threw in that Screwface would be the fifth wheel and cry at both movies <laughs> 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 he's just going through all 
love it, Screwface. He's got that. all the emotions. Yeah. I love that. That's he's definitely even if he's just the third wheel for for Victor and Severo. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. He's crying. Yep. A hundred percent. And yeah. I'm not even sure he knows why at points. I think he's just <laughs> like having. He's like, How I've never feeling? seen BBC Pride and Prejudice. Why is this, like, <laughs> affecting me so much? What is Pride and Prejudice? Yeah. Do they still have Pride and Prejudice 7,000 years in the future? That is a question. Oh, it's definitely one, isn't it? That's a question for people. They should. Yeah. They better. Garrett Knightley should live forever. And Colin Firth, too. They <laughs> yeah. need to keep going. We yeah. need them. I love it. I love it. Oh, well, that's funny. <laughs> All right, who's next? Who else are we okay. feeling? Um, I wrote down Cassie. Okay. I said he is seeing Barbie. He's never heard of Greta Gerwig. Uh, <laughs> he thinks he's going to see a silly toy movie with hottie Margot Robbie. And he buys an I Am Knuff sweatshirt two days later. Oh, he is also Ken. Yeah. I think he's, yeah. he's a Ken, right? Yeah. Like, yep. that's, I that's 100% a Ken. back that. Yep. Yeah. Does yeah. not go see Oppenheimer? Is what I'm gathering. I don't, <laughs> I don't think he so. You guys? I don't no, think he would. No, I think he's hiding no. from those demons that he wants to get as far away from that type of a world mm -hmm. as he can. He wants to live in the mm -hmm. fantasy world of Barbie. He doesn't want the like wartime mm -hmm. biopics. <laughs> no, either that or if somebody he's makes him go. That life. If somebody makes him go. He's drunk the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. That's the only way he's getting through it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Okay. Uh, what about... I'm just trying to look through here. Diomedes. I have an interesting one. Okay. Right here. All right. What's, what are your thoughts on Diomedes? My thoughts on Diomedes is that he wants to see Barbie and is very interested in like what that war, like the female brain kind of a thing. Meanwhile, Ori wants to go to Oppenheimer. And so they, they are also a quintessential, but are reluctant to see the other one. But I think they both like them both equally, but like go to it of like, he's the one who wants to see Barbie. She wants to see Oppenheimer. I guess we'll go to both. We both like both. Like, I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I didn't do Ore, but I'm kind of on this. I was kind of on the same page with you about Diomedes. I said he he's the boyfriend who respectfully shows up to Barbie with the girlfriend, right? Yeah. Like he's yeah. getting dragged there, but he respects it and he kind of learns a thing or two. Um, and then he sees Oppenheimer later and he appreciates the aesthetics more than anything else. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so I'm kind of like he he was just wasn't super excited about it didn't have bad feelings about it but yeah came and learned something and yeah yeah i like it Crescent yeah it thoughts. sounds right honestly yeah there's i feel like a lot that he could have liked in um in oppenheimer that i don't really know how to distill into like sentences <laughs> you know how i feel about a just... lot of things honestly yeah <laughs> Because Diomedes has, like, you know, he's just very introspective. And I think the movie yeah. is introspective as we're watching it from, from um, you know, Oppenheimer's point of view for the majority of it. Yeah. So I think he was Oppenheimer. Nice. I like it. Yeah. All right. Let's do our other big POV, Lysander. What do we think Lysander's doing? All right, hold on. I think he's at the bottom of my list because I fucking hate that kid. <laughs> okay. Okay. So like, hell up. He's, okay. He's, he's going Op and B. So he's Oppen seen Oppenheimer B. first. Yeah. And then Barbie. Okay. He goes to Oppenheimer and writes a checklist. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I, I, love I got that. it. Yep. Uh huh. And then he goes um, to Barbie and he thinks it's a silly toy movie. Mm, yeah, I I'm with you on that. I wrote he he's a huge Oppenheimer fanboy, and he thinks he is Oppenheimer, but he's actually just another mediocre white man with too much confidence. And I said he's afraid of women who unabashedly love Barbie. He feels betrayed by Ken and my by, by men in Knuff sweatshirts, but he never actually sees Barbie. 
Oh, yeah. Um, I had that he really loved Oppenheimer, and he thinks he's, like, liberal enough for Barbie, but in the end does not understand it. Um, and didn't like it because, these are my notes from January, didn't like it when he found out the patriarchy isn't about horses. Like, I think he <laughs> was, like, pro-patriarchy and pro, yeah, this is it, until Ken changes back. And he's like, no, that's not, that's there not There aren't it. any horses. <laughs> Lysander loves his horses. So, yeah, it sounds like we're all on it the same to, Like, a disturbing there. amount. Yeah. But I think yeah. you would think <laughs> that he... You know, oh, I'll see Barbie in the same way of like Diomedes of I'll take notes, I'll be whatever. But is sitting there and Barbie going, I don't know what you're complaining about. Like, I, this isn't real. This is yeah. attacking men. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that we were all agreed, though, that he loves Oppenheimer. And he's like buying the DVD the day it comes out, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. But he doesn't get Oppenheimer either, right? Because Oppenheimer doesn't like you know is not glorifying. No, it's not glorifying it at all. Yeah, no, no, no. no. But I it's, think that's the thing is he he doesn't understand either movie. Exactly. Like, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So media illiterate that he does not get the messages being told to him. Agreed. Absolutely. Uh, all right. All right. Um, well, I put if we're on the bad guy bandwagon atalantia what do we think atalantia is doing wait gotta find her she also thinks of oppenheimer as a checklist i yeah (laughs) but loves barbie um okay no go no like for the reasons that she should no, but I think she also doesn't understand. I think she's one of the women who's like, our lives isn't that hard. Like, there was definitely people who saw Barbie and did not understand it was the average woman's point of view and not, like, the super elite. Like, she's sitting Girls there going, I... Yeah, like, I... I don't think she understands that, like, she's like, that her world is not everything. That she's like, I've never faced those problems. And just, yeah. like, mm. so I think That's she, pretty much- yeah, like, I think she loves Oppenheimer for the same reasons Lysander does, doesn't fully understand it. But also, Barbie, she just looks at it as the silly toy movie and is like, oh, no, that's not what women's lives are like. Okay. I, I think inwardly, you're correct. Like, she's mm-hmm. like, this is, like, not real. Like, I haven't experienced this. Like, why are these yeah. whiny, like, girls whining? Um, I wrote that she works, like, girl boss Barbie themes into her campaign for, like, Supreme <laughs> Dictator. You know? <laughs> it's, like, hip, right? And then she, like, wants, yes! like, the, the vote. You know? But she was bored through the whole thing. She absolutely, you guys are right. Like, she didn't believe that it was, like, you know, a real portrayal. I also wrote that she didn't really get Oppenheimer either, but she has all kind of fantasies about Cillian Murphy. I think she oh, was showing yeah. up to see Poor Cillian mm-hmm. Murphy yeah. be, you know, doing his beautiful, beautiful face thing of just being there with his face. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Existing sharply. Exactly. <laughs> that man's that is beautiful. Man. That's be- I would watch him do pretty much anything. Run from zombies, blow places up. Yep. I'm in. I'm in. I'm on board. I love it. So, yeah, I think, I think, yeah. Yeah. I think she's also somebody who didn't pay it. Like, she probably went opening night going, this will be a fun girls movie. And didn't, like, so didn't know that Barbie has kind of a secondary message to it and was kind of knocked outside. But I think if she knew that that message existed wouldn't go see barbie because it's like that is that Mm. is republic propaganda is what that is (laughs) that's exactly what it is it's propaganda yeah yeah these women with their complaints (sighs) just whining all the time yeah yeah all right okay what Uh, else we got ephraim Ephraim. Okay, so I have a very interesting take that I was thinking about for Ephraim. So let's hear yours first. Oh, go. 
No, 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 you no, go. no, 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 I wrote that Ephraim goes to see Oppenheimer because he doesn't believe that he deserves to see Barbie and he must punish himself with sad war stories. <laughs> wow. You know, but everyone deserves to see Barbie. That's the point of yeah. Barbie. Yeah. He doesn't know it. So he goes, you know, he's going to Oppenheimer. Yeah. I didn't have anything besides that. though. So, All right. What were your strong feelings? Um, no, I think. Go. I think he would go see both. Um, it would be Oppenheimer first, and then Barbie as a treat. Uh, okay. Except he would go alone, sit in the back, uh -huh. get blackout drunk, and cry about Trig the whole time. Aww. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, same I, you and me. Yeah, you guys are on the same page. I'm going almost similar, but not. I'm saying he sees neither. And goes to Mission uh -oh. Impossible, which also came out that weekend. That he is actually a Mission Impossible boy and wants to see oh, just a man. fun action and not get into anything and ignore the world. And he's seeing Mission yeah. Impossible. Here's he's actually Kingdom. critiquing the heist. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. And you know what? Like, here's the thing. You are right. He would go see Tom Cruise. Because Tom Cruise is a little bit, you know, he's like not all oh, there. Really? He's like not like a great person. And yet I'm showing up to those movies every freaking time. I love them. That's a great escapist movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. That's a very, mm -hmm. very good call. Yep, You're that right. is totally like, fair. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love it. There you go. I super love it. Yeah. That's a really great. That's like an A plus <laughs> I just, take. Yep. I just couldn't <laughs> see him in either. And then it was like. Mission Impossible. That's the movie for him, which was the one. I didn't the even other know one that, that was the same weekend. It's the same weekend, and it was really funny. Of they tried to include themselves in Barbenheimer. There's a lot of their like the Mission Impossible trying to be like also come and see us, like the same. And like I'm sure they had the lowest turnout of all time oh. because everyone was yeah. doing Barbenheimer. Yeah, yeah. I did see Mission Impossible in the theaters, but like mm -hmm. the next weekend. Yeah. I also fell asleep through it. Not because it was not good, but because I was just very tired. <laughs> Truth comes out. But I do I do love those movies. I think they're really fun. Yeah. I think if Trig right, was, was alive, I think if Trig was alive, he would have dragged F them to Barbie. Barbie. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That would have happened. Actually, yeah. I think they I would think... double. I think they would Barbenheimer because like Trig also was like a army war like would appreciate the art of Oppenheimer would get that behind the scenes and the struggles the, it will even even if he didn't appreciate the the war of it it's again I feel like I'm gonna say this a million times it's such a beautiful movie yeah like visually like seeing it on the big screen was just awesome like yeah I feel like Trig for sure would have appreciated that at least for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'll throw a right. holiday out there as well, of just because we're talking about kind of the trio. And I mentioned her earlier that I think Holiday wants to go to Oppenheimer and enjoys Oppenheimer, but also secretly loves Barbie. Like she doesn't want to show how much she loves Barbie, but secretly loves Barbie. Kinda of, kind of on the same same vibe. I said she goes to see Barbie just to get a break, right? She's looking yeah. for a break, but she ends up like, sobbing the whole time, yeah. right? And she's like not prepared for it at all. Yep. Um, and she maybe yeah, she I don't think she talks about it with anyone ever. No, it's right? not coming up. No, it's her and Victor real drunk one night both admit to crying through Barbie. That's how it right. comes out. And right. uh, Mustangs in the corner going, "I knew it." knew it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it slumber party confessions for yeah sure. all right here's mm -hmm. another one i have a hot take about but we'll let okay. you guys go first lyria okay i i don't i kind of have a hot take about her too i think okay i said okay she's the young girl in barbie calling barbie a fascist 
She has no nostalgia for Barbie, so she's kind of above getting sucked into the hype. She'll go see Oppenheimer with Victor, though, for some hot girl summer kind of shit. Oh, there you go. All right. Crescent, thoughts? I, I think she's not a Barbie person. I don't think she's a Barbie person either. Crescent, thoughts? Yeah, she... I don't think she's... I think she's too angry for yeah. Barbie. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was going to say that I think she doesn't see either and waits to stream them or pirate them because she doesn't want to give big Hollywood her money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. you're, you're correct. She right? pirated Oppenheimer. She one hundred percent. She was not see. She was not using her like well earned money to see. You know, f- give Hollywood the money. But yeah, no. unless yeah, Victor is paying. You know? Oh yeah, that's right. Victor could pay. Yeah, that's fine. Victor goes again with her, which I think Victor totally would. Yeah, I think yeah, but. Yeah, agreed. She's not a Barbie girl Mm-mm. in a Barbie world. Like no. in plastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Volga, who right. I have not given a thought to until this moment. So I... mine will be a good Ooh. reaction. That's a person I forgot existed until this moment. Oh, no. I hope she's on my way. I think, uh, I think she's okay. Barbie only and just... I think she's also Barbie only. Fucking loves it. Yeah. 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 I am, I'm on board with that. That's correct. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, cause she likes to go to the zoo and take her mind off it. So I can't see her like getting into Oppenheimer. And I think she goes to Barbie with like the original marketing hype of like, this will just be a fun escapism movie, but then absolutely loves it of like, this is my world. Like, this is what I'm feeling. Yeah. 100%. I think she's super timid but she shows up with like a little pink bow like somewhere oh, in her yeah. hair mm. just t- she just really wants to get into it but she's kind of not like confident yeah. enough yet to to cosplay yeah but yeah yeah not a no Oppenheimer for her no Oppenheimer. She's too sweet mm-hmm. I also think she's going to which I in Canada we used to call Toonie Tuesdays which was a two dollar movie night I think she's saving her money, so she's going to do a matinee in the middle of a Tuesday. 100%. <laughs> Save her money and go in. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I do think yeah. she... And she's probably sitting there trying to convince Lyria to go see her. I'm like, you'll really like it. And then... And Lyria's just not having it. I'm like, oh my and god, like, you got sucked no. into that? Like, Lyria... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what happens. I love it. My God, yeah. Uh, uh, let's do Cavix, and then we'll throw Niobe in as well. Unless you think that they wouldn't double date or like go to as a date, but let's let's throw Cavix and Niobe in there, and Sophocles if you really want. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have Niobe, but I had Sophocles. I said Cavix is going to Barbie, and he's head he's to toe in pink, and yep. Sophocles has a match costume yeah i love Cavix it. has dyed yep. his beard pink yep yep probably probably actually no you know what i bet you he dyes it blonde like conditions the ever-loving shit out of it so that it's like it's like head hair and then puts <laughs> pink bows in it oh yeah i think you could, just, you could put bows in a, a beard that's oh, not I'm, like head I'm, hair but i'm aware but he wants to be but it like has to be that hair. luscious. He wants Barbie. It has hair. to be luscious. And I think Niobe just mm-hmm. walks beside laughing. Like she knows that she's got the best husband of like, look at this ally. Like, yeah. So you know what? I also I'm gonna say Cavix is the only dude who cries at Barbie out of like our whole list right here. I think yeah. he actually cries. Yeah, I think he balls his think, eyes. And I think Niobe is just like <laughs> It's okay. I think he Don't tries to lie. talk. He tries to talk to Thraxa about it. Of like afterwards, being like, "Is this your true? Yeah. Like, can we? What can I do?" No. And Thraxa does not want to talk about it. This is, I'm not getting into my emotions. Do not. I, think I did have Thraxa somewhere. I was gonna say, what are we doing for oh, Thraxa? I said for Thraxa, she's seeing both, but to ogle America Ferrera and Florence Pugh, and she writes yeah. crossover fan fiction about their characters. 
<laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, for sure. Those are two very beautiful women in these movies. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I think Thrax is a Wait, wait. Woman. She doesn't include Emily Blunt? Oh, I forgot Emily Blunt was. In the crossfit? I mean, I I could, okay, like, if you're going to, like, cross over women in the movies, I'm thinking Emily Blunt gets paired with Bar Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah. If we're, that is fair. If we're crossing over, you know, if we're doing a ship. But, yeah. Yeah. I like that's it. my, that's just, that's a totally vibes-based answer. I have not thought yeah. about it. <laughs> no, I like it. But I do think that like, she doesn't go with Kavix and Niobe because she knows Kavix is going to be ridiculous and she doesn't Sorry. want to be part of yeah. that. But I think he does try and talk to her about it after and she's like, leave me alone. Like, this, yeah. no. This is not what we do. Yeah. <laughs> go talk to your, who's, is it Zena? Zena? Who's the one? Zana. Zana, the daughter, and then the unnamed daughter. <laughs> I like that we just have yep. a telemanus we don't know the name of. Can't wait for Red God for that to be like a plot twist of like, remember the unnamed telemark. What if daughter? that is like, like the winner, how the winner's name of Hazard Bezel gets worked? <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. They are the, the last unnamed telemanus. But then they have to have an X in their name. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> wait, there is. Oh, it's, it just says X is the first initial. No, no, because it's Kavix, Thraxa, no. Pax, Daxo, oh. and then oh, Zana Xana. is an X. I literally <laughs> did this did not click until right now. Right now, until this exact moment. So, if you have an X in <laughs> your name, not that. please. And, and like and nine it. years. Nope. Yeah. Once in nine years, did I did that? Did click. that? No. So, yep. thank you. Great job, guys. There you go. So if you have an X in your name, please apply for <laughs> Operation Hazard Bedlam um, by a lot of stickers so that you can win yeah. the Red God cameo. We can use this moment as a mini commercial break because as this is put out, if you're watching this within the first, I think, three days of it being released, you can still buy stickers for Operation Hazard Bedlam. Some of those stickers oh, could do be it. winnings. Yeah, some of them will be instant winners that you could get your name in Red God. You could win yeah, an advanced win reader a... copy. Um, I think that's it. You for could the... win a, a Dominus Domina Domina oh, shirt. Yes, so you can get a cool-ass t-shirt. And then you can use those stickers to enter the contest, the passage... Uh, that you have to represent your color. Um, both Crescent and I are proctors or moderators in there. Uh, so you will see us both guiding you and supporting you from the air as we drink our wine, if we are true Fitchner, or yelling at you because that's what a proctor does. We're here to support, cheer you on, maybe make and fun scold of you, you. Definitely making fun of you. I'm going to be in your channel, Skipper, so I'm going to cause a lot of problems. That's okay with you. My ban button is fast. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, excuse you? <laughs> I'm going to show up like Sorry, who, who banned the sex bot? <laughs> yes, we did in the den a couple of weeks ago have a bot finally show up, and Crescent was on it before anybody else even really noticed what was happening. Yeah. I just came back to the conversation and it was all taken care of. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was really good. It felt like nothing happened, but so much happened. Yeah. Well, yeah. head over to Let Escalates to join that competition there. I like uh, how you just did a commercial for something that is like, you know, <laughs> not yours. <laughs> I mean, we're involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we I used to yeah, always yeah. do merch you update. Are. Commer like merch commercials for just like whatever we were wearing everybody yeah we would just throw it in there go buy this yeah okay all right so the other people i'm wondering about that kavix and naomi may have had to supervise or at least draw well i think pax can drive himself electra and pax augustus what are we thinking for the kids i didn't originally think about the kids but like yeah, first instinct, 
I don't. Uh, yeah, PAX, PAX, bar, PAX goes, goes to both. Yeah. yeah, sure. Electra only goes to Oppenheimer. Oh yeah, she's too mm-hmm. cool. PAX loves both movies. Yeah, yeah. Learns learns everything about both. He goes home and he buys an Oppenheimer biography. Yes, I think he yep. wants to read the actual like book it's based on because it's but yeah like but i think he also this is actually actually from someone in the den post (laughs) said that pax has a i am kenaf fuzzy sweatshirt like he's he's reading oppenheimer while wearing the sweatshirt like that's how he's a true barbenheimer electra only does oppenheimer and immediately doesn't really think about anything from it just goes Okay, and goes back to her knives. Like she didn't really take yep. anything. Oh away man, from I it. thought there was gonna be explosions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like she's like, that's not what I thought it was, and goes back to her knives. Too many senatorial hearings in this movie. They should have bombed more stuff. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, she like, half, wanted half more the war and hearings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> more she war won. crimes, fewer meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think of who else Next. who we're missing. I only have one other person right. on my list over here, and it's Harmony. What do we think our oh. favorite villain to hate? Favorite, I would say, the worst of the worst villains. What is Harmony doing? Um... I hadn't thought about Harmony. I, uh, I think she's seeing Oppenheimer. Yeah. And she's like I think mad. She's, about both. I was yeah. going to say, I think she sees both and is mad about both. Yeah. She's just mad about everything all the time. That is accurate. Yeah. I don't think the movies are in <laughs> No. I think she would see Oppenheimer first and doesn't want to see Barbie because that's too frou-frou, whatever. But then if she does see Barbie, I think she's those people who thinks that Barbie doesn't push it enough. Is that like, no, they should have left the Kens oppressed. Like the Kens, right? Like, should have pushed back you, right? Yeah. (laughs) Like, I think she's angry about both. Wants to go see Oppenheimer more than Barbie, but if happens to see Barbie... Just hates it okay. because it's not the message that she would push. Yeah. Yeah. She, she wants Oppenheimer to bomb Kenland. And yes. like that doesn't happen. So she's not about it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. I had, if that was the last one you had. That's the last one I have. So throw him out. Ragnar. Oh my God. I forgot about Ragnar. I feel like Ragnar's absolutely Barbie. sees Barbie with bows Kavex. in his hair. Like, yeah, he's crying yep, with Cavex. Hundred percent. Interesting. I You're I had on. Oppenheimer, but I said oh. he approaches with, with like a curiosity from an historical perspective because mm-hmm. I think he's like I can see he's that. He's actually wants to think. You know, he wants to yeah he, yeah, and he's he like you learn. know learning who he is. Um, I also think he gets a tattoo that says "Now I am death, destroyer of worlds." Oh, he now I am hundred percent just a giant chest. Or piece. did he have that before? He might. <laughs> he probably had that. He before. didn't know where he the probably. quote was from, but he already had the tattoo and was shocked to learn where the quote was from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I like it. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Rogue. Rogue. Ooh. Rogue. Ooh. That's a, I, I think, okay. Okay, go for it. So you know how you said Lysander thinks like Barbie was secretly unfair to men? That's yeah. what I think Roke thinks. Yeah. I said Roke goes to see both with an open mind while they're in the theaters. He thinks Oppenheimer is beautiful. Um, it, he like yeah. appreciates that. Yes, that maybe more than anybody else in the, the yeah. universe. Um, the poetry. But he secretly like thinks that Barbie was really unfair to men. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, it sounds accurate. Yeah, I think you've nailed it yeah. with that one. 100 percent Yeah. And and we'll set up, you know, a podcast or something so that everybody can hear his opinion on how bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my god, you're right. Like Rogue is such a podcaster. 
<laughs> well, I don't know. How, I don't know if I should be offended or not. I was about to say no offense to podcasters, and then I realized no, what I, this no, was. No, let me say, he is like having a podcast, even if he has no one to talk with. Like, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he is just putting his thoughts out Jeez. into the world. Yeah. Him, him and Carnes literally shouting a, into the void. Yes, without a theme, exactly. But he's just like, this is important. Spirit, here you go. Be blessed with my thoughts. I love it. That's really funny. But yeah, I think that's that's so funny. Oh God, yeah. we're rogue. I have other. You're not rogue. That I. You're no, not rogue. but like we're podcasters over here <laughs> shouting into the void. Um, we know what we are. We know what we are. True. You have a purpose. You have we a theme. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I think I think he, seriously just. Yeah. yeah. There's no demand that. for it. But he's putting no. it out there. <laughs> Nobody cares about your opinion, Ro. No one cares. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I love that so much. Um, Sefi? Oh, Sefi. Ooh. I think Sefi goes to Oppenheimer, loves and enjoys it, but I think secretly goes to Barbie and loves and enjoys it. But I don't think she would openly go to Barbie. She waits until it's on streaming and then yeah, yeah. Well, or and then sees it, it in or her. Might go once it's like the discourse of everyone talking about how it's this like feminist thing. thing. That's when she would go. But I think she would see something about a doll and be like, "Why are you idolizing this?" Mm-hmm. And then when the message finally, like the marketing changed after kind of the second weekend would then look at it and go, okay, maybe this is something I want to see. But I think Oppenheimer, she from the beginning sees the trailer and goes, I want to see that. Yeah, I said she definitely sees Oppenheimer. And then I said she personally starts the campaign for Emily Blunt to win an Oscar. I think she's just super into that. Yeah. That girl. performance. I like it. I, I think like she it. relates to that. Yeah. Um, okay. We did Holiday, right? Yep. We did Black Rum, Lyria, Lysander, Diomedes, Octavia. Oh, Octavia. Interesting. She's neither. Has no has no uh, no remorse for her previous actions. Uh, like the burning of Rhea. Yeah. <laughs> I said she does not both have movies. time for movies. Huh? Does not Sorry. have time for movies. Yeah. I think. Uh, I said she also fears them both because they are both too powerful to, for the public. <laughs> That's it. Is I think she would almost like try and ban Barbie of like don't don't come out with this like uprising that you can change your like future. Like no no we're not having that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I said he's... that for that he banned oh, Barbie yeah. on Mars. Yep. Uh, and then he also stands RDJ's character in Oppenheimer. Like, he's, like, obsessed with him and thinks that he's the true hero of the story. Skipper, RDJ is, like, basically the, the not the villain. He's the, uh, he's the antagonist of okay. Oppenheimer. Like, sorry, yeah. spoilers there, guys. But, yeah, no. Ag- Augustus loves him. He's, like, super okay. into him. Oh, God. And hates Barbie. Hates Barbie. But yeah, yeah, yeah. he's banned. You're right. Barbie. Octavia bans yep. Barbie. I think Octavia yeah. also tries to. I don't think she would full out ban because she knows then that there would be an up cry rather than Nero's not that wise. Like, I think Nero full bans it. Octavia knows to try and like spin it. Like, she uses it as a like, no, no, she that's not how it would. Yeah. Maneuvers to try and exactly. get people to be less popular. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think she knows that a full yeah. ban of it would be not in her favor in the end of the day because, yeah, but interesting. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Tactus? Ooh. Ooh. See, I think I, I said always... He... Sorry, go. You have the notes. No, you got I was going to say, I think he... He's like, we know the story of him having the violin. Like, he's got a softer side that I think he, he might not understand Barbie, but I think he can enjoy it. Because he's I think he's that... very much 
secretly seeing Barbie and enjoying it because yeah. he's only secretly playing his violin. Yes. You know? Exactly. He doesn't do that. I said he goes to see Oppenheimer open wing weekend and he tells everybody that he's going oh, yeah. to see Oppenheimer open wing weekend. And then he's so drunk at the theater that he doesn't remember a thing that happened. But yeah, I think he's my, seeing Barbie yeah. quietly. My thought is he tells everybody he's going to see Oppenheimer, but actually goes to Barbie. Oh, there you go. There you go. Pays even for the Oppenheimer ticket, but slips into the Barbie theater. Yeah. 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 I like it. Okay. Uh, the Jackal. Oh. <laughs> I want to immediately say Oppenheimer, but like I feel like that's stereotype, but I don't think he would understand I mean, some, Barbie. Like, sometimes you just... I mean... Yeah. Like, he, of all the people... He, he also was, was like, kind of, like, you know, kicked repeatedly. Yeah. Like, what? Like, I, I think he's seeing neither, and he is incredibly superior about it. Oh, yeah, that checks like, out. That <laughs> checks out. Yeah, fair. <laughs> yeah. I'm above us. Yeah. And he wants everyone to know that he's above it. He started uh -huh. a rival mm -hmm. podcast to Rokes about how he's about <laughs> <laughs> above things. <laughs> well, he owns all the media, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. His, he doesn't even yeah, need to his, see a podcast. He just gets himself a show, a news desk, and he's just there all over the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his, yeah, yeah, his podcast is just, like, you know how you can actually cancel out waveforms? If you send a negative waveform, his is just literally the inverse of rogues. <laughs> <laughs> so if you play them together, it's just silence. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, you're right. I, I was going to say, he's that. definitely not Barbie, and he's probably, like, he is, of everyone in the uh, whole series, probably the worst to women. Like, yeah. There's not a lot of great people to women, but like just his treatment of Lilith, who is supposed to be his equal, like mm -hmm. he's not supporting yeah. Barbie. He's not supporting but Barbie. Lilith has so so much wrong with her. I think I don't know. All these characters have a lot of things wrong with them. I I think quite possibly Lilith has the most. I think she's wrong. The most fucked up. I mm -hmm. think she's the most fucked up out of everybody. And that, yeah. That, Oh boy! I, oh well, boy! My thing yeah, there's is a lot to, to unpack. Look at, right? Yeah, my thing is to always look at the villains and like, why are you a villain? And we get a lot of their backstories. We know Atlanteas. We know Lysanders. And there's that like, yeah. they're not justified, but we know what they are. I Lilith guess. is literally just like you're insane, like insanely in love with a psychopath, like for who doesn't love you, like. But how did she even get that this? way? Yeah. Right? We how did nothing she, about what her. happened to her as a child that she fell in love with this person? Like, yeah. you know? I want to know. I kept I, her I, from I, dying in the Institute, I guess. But I, that's not enough to get me to love that guy. <laughs> like, well, you, obviously, like, you're not as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. I was going to read like a short story about like, Lilith, how Lilith became Lilith, man. Like, because I have no idea. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because yep. we know Harmony's She's... backstory. We know, like, everyone else. And, like, there's just no justification to Lilith. Yeah. 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 I, yep. I also think she's going um, to Barbie and not under. She's going, she's the person who's like, this isn't what our life is. Even though, like, well, no, maybe she agrees with Barbie because she's of all of them being put on this, like, you have to be perfect, but he will never love you. I don't know. Now I'm having mixed thoughts about that one. I said she goes to see Oppenheimer just because she wants to watch the world burn. Like, some, oh. something's too wrong with her. Like, Barbie's too happy. Yeah. <laughs> too, many, too many good things are happening in Barbie. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she has an interest in that. But, but I see what you're has, saying. Has the Electra point of view, though, of there's not enough bombs and there's too much meaning in this, whereas... Sure. Where's yeah. the actual world mm -hmm. burning? But yeah. 
like she's someone who should understand Barbie of like you, you know the whole America Ferrera speech, but I don't All think it actually can. Barbie. Yeah, but I don't think it really yeah. connects with her, even though of. Like, unlike at Atlantia, where it's like, no, you are all the way up here and who's going to say shit to you. She is in the mud of who she's thinking loves her and is treating her in this capacity. But I still don't think she gets it. Like, I think she's sitting there going, well, no, he's better than that. Like, I think she's just in that denial state of like, no, no, like, I don't get treated like that. It's like, you fucking do. You do. You are actively being treated that way. Yeah. 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 I mean, we don't need to get into like the gender politics of the gold, but you know, they're definitely, I think a lot of them are probably not experiencing this the way that other women of other colors are experiencing Barbie. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. Um, Okay. EO. Oh, Oh. I said she's sorry. Go, go ahead. I was going to say she would, I don't think she's going opening weekend to Barbie. She's going to stick up her nose to the idea of a movie with a doll. But I think she would absolutely love the message in Barbie once she found out what it is. Mm -hmm. I think so. I didn't have any thoughts about her and Barbie, but I did say that she is protesting Oppenheimer outside the theater. And she's giving, she's giving side eye to everybody who walks in to buy a ticket. Yeah. 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 But I think, he, yeah, I think she would, if she, I think she might have to be forced to see Barbie, but once she did. Or she's seen yeah, the clips of it. it. I think she's seen the clips, you know, whatever. She's watching TikTok or Instagram and gets to see the America Ferreira speech ahead of time. TikTok. Yeah. Games. Yeah, yeah. It's on the hollows. Um, <laughs> and once she sees the speech. Or, like, what the end result is. At that point, I think she's pro-Barbie. But I don't think she's willingly seeing it when she thinks it's just about a doll. I think she's also probably protesting it at that point. Of why are you giving a billion dollars to this ridiculous thing. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, Theodora. Ooh. That's a hard one because I think I she's think both. she's Barb- double yeah, feature. She's Barbenheiming. Yep. I said she's sort of past the age where she gets excited about either of them, but she really, really, in particular, loves seeing young women in pink going in groups together to see this movie. Mm-hmm. And she's also very, very pleased that Robert Downey Jr. finally won his Oscar. Oh uh, yeah. I think she just has a lot of like warm feelings in her heart about both of the films and their casts and yeah. like the the community experience that we all had about these films. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll agree with that. Um, okay. I said Quicksilver, but he just, I said he just owns Mattel. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> right? like, he, this is, his he is Will Ferrell. <laughs> he is Will yeah. Ferrell. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's just, he, like, he stopped thinking the whole time of how to milk a sequel and a prequel and a theme park. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my yep. God. Yes. Yep. yep. And, and then Mateo, Mateo absolutely makes Quicksilver build him a Mojo Casa, or Mojo <laughs> Dojo <laughs> Casa Dreamhouse. I think he wants a Barbie Dreamhouse. Yeah. Okay, maybe a Dojo Casa. I think the Dreamhouse is Why not? Cool. You know Wait. what? I, I think he oh, has course. the dichotomy. House. He's got both. Okay. He's like, yeah. Yeah, one half is the Mojo Dojo. And one half is we the, can both the other half is the dream here. house. I was going to say, I think it's the dream house, but the dream house with horses. And yes. Bruce Spears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think I agree with that, that I think both of them are Barbie leaning, even though they sh- like have, well, not as much Mateo, but Quick has that like you would think Oppenheimer, but I, based on Lightbringer and wanting to leave it all behind, I don't think he wants to pay attention yeah. to that world. I think he wants yeah. to lean into the like fun of Barbie. And you're right, of like sure. again, oming Mattel of like, let's not go with the serious message in Barbie. Let's go with the fun. Like, how yeah, much money can we right. make he on this? Yeah. yeah. 
That's so All right, that's cool. everyone I had. That's yeah. Crescent, who are we missing? Here are our encyclopedia here. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Apple. Oh my god. Oh my. Barbie. Uh, yeah. Barbie. Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Yep. Opening weekend. I think opening weekend. I think so. Yeah. 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 I'm deciding if he's dressed up. No, I think he might be naked. He might just. I think he's like maybe a pink like speedo loincloth thing going on yeah, there, sure. but he's there not wearing a lot. He may no no he is <laughs> naked, but he's got pink Barbie glitter, like pink body glitter all over himself. Okay. That's okay. what I'm going with here. That's a good one. And he also yeah, knows that he's taking home all the women after, and the men. Like, he just knows that that's where he's going to pick up. He knows, but he's not right about that. Because <laughs> Barb is something different than he expected it to be. Yes. I think he still enjoys it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but women don't want to go home with Apollonius after that. Movie. After Barbie. Like, yeah. 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 Not, I think you're right on that one. He, he, has, he has several I Am Knuff sweaters thrown yeah. at him. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I think that's right. it. I think. Uh, who else? Aja? Oh. Neither? Aja decided there weren't enough sword fights in either of them. Yeah. She was just mad that there yeah. weren't swords. No sword Lauren fighting. is very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lauren's just Maybe over actually, it. you know what? He probably, see, he probably sees Oppenheimer. I think he sees Oppenheimer for mm. sure. Interesting. Yeah. I think he likes Oppenheimer because Oppenheimer mm-hmm. is critical. Um, that's true is he's yeah. probably he probably reflects a lot in oppenheimer of like yeah being in similar situations yep right yeah atlas neither neither, neither. yeah yeah. Far out yeah 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 I think that's it. I think that's everyone. Now we good? I think we're good. The, that's, a, uh, that's a lot of people. That was yeah. a lot. Uh-huh. Uh, and everyone There's will have to weigh in whether or not they agree. We can uh, have that discourse. Yeah, leave your uh, comments down below. We greatly appreciate comments, <laughs> like, subscribe, do all the things. Uh because it gets the algorithm going. It's great. Um, but yeah, this has been fantastic. Thank you, Jabs, for doing all the work today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's Thank you. Literally, all the work was done by you. <laughs> I just got very excited about it. I got super I excited about it. <laughs> you were the exact... I was like, we have to do Barbenheimer. And, you know, the yeah. one person that I know needed to come on was the person I knew had done the proper Barbenheimer. Yeah. I... I think that I even suggested you before I knew that you were already planning to come on. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I had already yeah, I asked someone. you, I asked you, did not tell Crescent and Crescent's like, who's coming on for Barbenheimer? What about jabs? And I was like, Oh, I've already talked about jabs. It's already I'm glad Barbenheimer. I give up that you just instinctively knew I saw both over on opening weekend. Like, thank you. Appreciate that. That's what I feel like I put out in the world and I'm glad it's being received. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Thank you. Yeah. I love it so much. Uh, really. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Join Operation Hazard Bedlam. Join the Howler's Den. Come hang out with us. And then your ridiculous comments will be included. Or whatever our ridiculous episode is might be inspired by you. Who knows? You could change the course of history. For real. Yep. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.